No improvisation comes completely out of thin air. In fact, trying to play something from nothing is incredibly difficult. So I would like to share with you today a little formula for improvisation that I've kind of accidentally developed over the years. This formula comes in three parts. Framework, variation, and glitter. So number one, framework. This is giving yourself a structure to work within. Something that's going to make it feel a little bit less floaty, a little bit less scary. So for instance, you could use a chord progression, or you could use a groove that, you've, that you know or that you've learned recently. You could start with a bass line, something like this. Give yourself something that you can work within and get to know that thing really, 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 really well. Play it in its simplest form over and over so that you can't possibly go wrong and you really feel it in your body. For instance, something like this. All right, so that's my framework. Part two is variation. So take this idea that you've been practicing, this motif, this groove, whatever it is, and pull it apart into all its different simplest components. So for instance, maybe it's got certain accents that repeat often. Maybe you've come up with a one melody that's got a really kind of prominent couple of notes, yeah? Or a chord progression that's quite full. Maybe you could play it empty with lots of space in between. Just take it apart and try and find as many different ways as possible that you can rehash that and use it again and again and again and see what new things it inspires. Variation doesn't just have to be in terms of changing the melody or switching the chord around or changing the bass line or putting an extra accent in the in the groove. You can also variate the way that you play it. So you can mess around with the dynamics. Yeah, you play the same thing but softer and with things taken out and build it up and play it louder again. Or really stretch the time in between, slow your playing down to bring that drama in and then bring it back up, right? So don't just think about adding variety to what you're playing in this space, but add variety to this space as well, so the way that you're playing it. Part three is glitter. This is my favorite part. Glitter is all the tiny little extra things just to make it really breathe and to really express yourself through what you're playing. Things like extra rolls on top, uh, fills up and down the scale, again changing the dynamics around, uh, maybe you can use harmonics or you can switch from a, a slap sound to using your knuckles, whatever it is, playing around with that texture a bit more. Don't overdo it though, because if you do it over and over and over again, it doesn't quite have the same impact. So here's an example of me playing the same thing that I just showed you, but with extra tiny little bits of glitter just to make it really come alive. Bonus tip, 
is do not judge whatever you're playing. Things will come out as you experiment that don't sound the way that you expect them to. I invite you to really lean into that and to really feel that and think, oh, okay, Hanpan's telling me to do this now. It felt like a mistake, but I'm gonna reframe how I consider that, how I think about that and move in that direction and see what happens. Because if you let that happen, you will stumble into new things that you never expected before. So really lean into those happy accidents, um, as Bob Ross would say, and let that guide you into new explorations. If you're interested in playing and improvising with other people, I recommend you check out this video next where I cover improvisation and jamming with another human being. Um, but in the meantime, I hope you have fun. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.